Hello punters and welcome to the Saturday Racing Review Show. Of course in this video uh, is the where I look at all the Saturday racing for the meetings that I provided previews for. So in this one we'll be looking at Morfittville, uh, the, the card at Caulfield and also at Ramwick as well. So um, I, I hope you, you guys enjoy this. Um, I certainly enjoy having a look at horses and for those of you who are new here, um, I basically go through each race. Uh, identify anything that I think was um, something to follow, something that was quite impressive. Um, just sort of break down each race and uh, see uh, what we probably can be following going forward from here. Um, I'm also going to be uh, answering some of your questions. I've put that out on social media. Um, so I'm going to be answering a few of those on this video. So keep an eye out for that. That'll be towards the back end of the video. So if you um, want to get some of your questions in, you can do so here on YouTube as well. Um, always feel free to drop comments on my uh, YouTube videos on the previews if there's anything that takes your interest from the weekend's race and that you want me to answer and and, and something that, what you want to hear my opinion on and um, we can obviously definitely have a discussion over as well which is something I'll we'll probably look to bring in at some point I might even get some of you to uh, really get, get uh, fully engaged into some of my videos so um, also in this you, if we're going to see a part two uh, to this video and, and it's going to be, be an interview with um, obviously the Sky Thoroughbred Central Mounting Yard presenter Lizzie Jelf so really looking forward to hearing from her it's a really good uh, interview I'm sure you guys will be really looking forward to that and then later on in the week I'll also be um, uploading an interview probably I might even look at it doing either tomorrow night or Wednesday I'll upload my interview with uh, WA Sky Thoroughbred Central and um, uh, form analyst in Brittany Taylor so I've got an interview with both of those which is why I took um, a bit of time off last week in terms of um, uploading a few videos because um, yeah I was just busy with that and I was uh, trying to get those interviews ready for you guys to out there to watch and also um, for myself I really enjoyed speaking to the both of them so I really appreciate their time so we're gonna get straight into tomorrow uh, Saturday's meetings and the f we're gonna look at Morfordville first and don't have to go very far I mean the first race for me we, we get to see, we got to see uh, a horse who I've had a lot of time for and she was, she's was she been very impressive in her two race starts since resuming. She was very good dominating and beating a, a pretty you know, average field at Caulfield. Now, no uh, disrespect to the field there, but she was always a class above those. In the end, that's turned out to be a pretty good form race because Triple D's has since come out come second in a race f uh, further on in the program at Moorfield. So probably should have seen Triple D's coming if we had have seen the early win of Dixon Street at because Dribble D's went around at a pretty big price. And I think I mentioned in my preview, it has my second selection on in that race. But um, it came out and defeated the general, which was a terrific tussle up the straight between the two of them. Um, the biggest reason why I think Dixon Street's win was just that more impressive is because there was a riderless horse that came up and started to really lay in on Dixon Street. And um, she, she lost a length or so and got behind the general. And she rallied back again once there was a bit of room when the riderless horse drifted back out again onto the course and she just savaged the line to get that win she had that desire to win and that's something you really want to see in a young three-year-old filly so i was very impressed with that victory there so she's definitely one to follow the general uh, was very good on speed richard lamming uh horse it looks a very nice type was beaten as a doll 70 favorite prior to this uh, race start but before that was in some very nice form so i think they're two horses that you could definitely follow out of the race and glory gamers make some good late ground probably is a horse that might be looking for a little bit further. So I definitely think you can take the top three. Look, nothing, no, just obviously Hardy Lass is a late scratching being the riderless horse. So you can forgive that run by Hardy Lass there. But definitely want to take the top three, particularly the top two going forward. I think they're both pretty nice horses to be looking at uh, going ahead. Moving on to race number two was the group three tab size produce uh, stakes. And it was a very good race as well. And Ringbolt came out one twenty six dollars again. I made it. I gave a bit of a push for that as I, I believe, if my memory serves correctly, I had it my fourth pick, and it ran really well. That was an impressive performance in the end. It landed towards the the speed and just kept on kicking. A, a lot of the, the leaders did stay on and um, dominate the race in, in this one as well as the race prior. So uh, it looked to be early in the day a bit of a leader by uh, track potentially, and we we're hoping that it didn't go down that path. But in the end, Morfordville is always one of the best tracks in Australia, and it proved otherwise that only those initial few races were the ones that were playing towards the leaders. But I thought the violinist was quite good. Um, it obviously made that mid-race move, hit the front, and it managed to keep kicking, really. And, I mean, Ringbolt got in front of it at about the 300-meter mark, but the violinist kept kicking. And so I thought that was an impressive performance of the violinist. So no respect to the winner, but I'd probably rather take... 
uh, the second horse just because of that mid-race work that I had to do, and it still managed to keep fighting on the lead. And Crown Mint was very impressive. This horse sat three deep the entire trip, could stayed on and kept going. Obviously, they didn't go at an extremely quick pace, as we could see that the leader stuck on pretty well. But, uh, yeah, they're definitely the three I want to follow. Ekin Maniacal was it's obviously a nice horse and went, jumped the favourite. No, no um, issues there. Had a good run in the race. Probably you would have liked to have seen it finish off a bit better if you had have backed it. But, uh, look, there's definitely nothing wrong with that performance. I was a bit, a bit disappointed in Dickman. I thought it would run much better. Uh, race coming out of that flying award form at Flemington, but uh, it was a little bit disappointing, but it could probably give a little bit of forgive there with uh, nothing much really coming from the back on that occasion. So race number two, I think the nine violinist is definitely only on a fire, and Crown Mint was very impressive being three wide the trip on speed, but just the fact the violinist made that early uh, race move and spent a bit of, uh, I guess, some of the petrol out of the tank we're trying to get to that, that lead, and then it managed to keep kicking was quite impressive to me. But look, all honors with Ringbolt, it was an impressive performance. Managed to put him away, but did get a good, really good run in the race. So no, the second horse, the one I want to follow the most out of that, with Crown Mint, another one who I thought was a very nice performance. Moving on to race number three, benchmark 80, uh, Amy Autumn Series final over the 1,400 metres. Jack White Prince was a very good win here. This was... Um, it was sitting three wide the trip and continued on and uh, scored quite impressively in the end. It was a good win. Uh, it's a horse that has been around the mark uh, so far as preparation. Was became uh, finished fifth by Poise of Rain the start prior and obviously won the the uh, the start before that being La Vita and two odd socks. So this horse um, was around the mark and and again it proved to be that case again. When it was a really good performance being three wide no cover and still managed to be able to hold on there. It was a good performance there. Uh, the other, the horse that I really want to uh, circle is I'm Impinge. Now, this horse was back in the ruck, made a real good ground from back in the field. And it was one of the horses, not many horses in that race as well, that also did make ground and was really coming through the line nicely. And it was paying $21. So obviously the starting price, you know, you can look at that. But I just thought that was a nice performance. Prior to that, did finish second uh, behind Poise to Rain in that uh, similar form line race that I mentioned with Jacobite Prince. So... This is a horse that might go around at a bigger start. If it meets some of these horses once again, I'm not sure um, what type of uh, races these horses will nom for uh, in the coming weeks. But if it meets some of this uh, opposition once again, uh, definitely is a horse that could turn the tables on them. And uh, I'd say he'll go around at a pretty good price as well. So it might be one to watch. So race number three, I think the win the winner's one to follow. It was a good win in three wide, no cover, imagine to kick on and win. But um, I'm Impinge was a real eye catcher late, and it might be one to watch uh, coming out of that race. Moving on to race number four, and uh, Rushwa and Triple D's managed to swallow up the leaders. This is where we got to see some of the swoopers come into the the races uh, for this part of the program. And Rushwa was a massive knockout; it, it knocked a lot of people out of there. Early quaddies and a lot of people, um, I don't think there would have been too many that would have backed it, but congratulations if you did. It was a very nice win. Held out Triple D's, who, like I mentioned, similar form lines earlier to Dixon Street, so probably should have seen it coming. It was paying 10 bucks, was beaten well there, but uh, Guji was an interesting runner. It was a nice finish there. Um, the perform prior to this race was just average, just moderate, um, but it was a good um, finish off regardless in the end, so got to keep an eye on that. El Madrava wasn't too bad. I mean, it just got swallowed up by the sweep in the end. It's a horse that I would still stick with. It was my best bet of the program, so a little bit disappointed that didn't at least run a top three, but I still think it was a good enough effort there. Um, but look, not a whole lot to follow that race. I'm not sure about the strength of that benchmark 64, but I think oh, I've got a lot of triumph for Alma Drava. I just think that she got well swallowed up in the straight there, and that's all it was really. It just was a, um, hot, a fast tempo race, suited the back markers. She was sitting midfield, ran them good enough. Not, so I'd still follow her coming out of that race. Uh, moving on to race number five now, it was a... And it was a 1,800-metre uh, benchmark 75 Adelaide Galvanising Provincial Super Series final. And uh, we saw Bajan put in a huge um, performance down the outside of the track to win that. That was, of course, quite impressive, actually. And it's also been out for a little while and um, really did turn its form around in that race there. But, um, look, yeah, I, I can't say it wasn't too impressive because while they did set a decent enough tempo, I guess there was a few mid-race moves and there was a few that were coming and sort of, you know, uh, up and pressure on the speed, but they didn't go extremely quick. So Bajan's win was quite good, and it was um, one that you should uh, really mark down. But the horse that I'm very, there's a couple, there's two very notable performances out of these. Uh, Manzala was very good, was up on the speed, managed to keep kicking when a lot of the leaders, I guess, dropped out of the out of the race. So that's something you've got to really look out for. And Hustle of Fiorente was a very good performance. This horse is rock hard fit. 
But uh, it's a horse that was really wide the whole trip. Didn't look a chance, but still gave a really nice sight in the end. And so it, it, I'm sure I can find a race. If it draws a better barrier, it'll be a good chance to uh, win a race very shortly as well. I, I thought that was a nice performance by the third horse. And Sarsun was really making good late ground under, under Emily Finnegan. was a good ro um, run, that one as well. Mont Monteferrante was making good ground late as well. So... They really did finish quite compact. I mean, you have a look at the, the top five. There was only a, uh, just over a length between them. So I think the form out of that race could stand up all right, uh, especially when they're sort of around these uh, benchmarks, 70 marks, uh, between 70 and 80, I'd say. Um, the, a lot of these horses we could see coming out and winning races around this sort of benchmark level uh, from here on out. But look, all honours with the winner. But I did think Manzala and Hasta La Friante were, were very good runs as well in the race. Moving on to race number six now, and it was uh, the listed Adelaide Galvanising Adelaide Guineas, and uh, Gamekeeper was absolutely superb. It was a phenomenal win, that one by Gamekeeper. Really showed a great turn of foot. Now, this horse, it's always shown us a bit of promise. So when you look back at its two-year-old career, beat Conqueror uh, at Sandown, um, and then it obviously went around some decent races. It went around in the... Um, sorry, it went around uh, when it finished behind... Uh, at Caulfield went in the blue diamond behind Liar. So, I mean, you, you're looking at some good form lines early in its two-year-old career. Hasn't really put it together, but since having a, a, a spell where it was out for 23 weeks, has come back in real good form. It's had put together three wins now in a row, um, and this was a nice win off a of fresh nut. It showed really good turn of foot to put this this field away. Well, again, while they did go at a decent enough tempo, this horse was absolutely phenomenal and definitely is one to follow now because... Put together three wins. Might just be saying the best out of this horse has always showed a bit of promise. So it was a nice win there. Quantum Mechanic is one I think you can follow. I think that was a good run on the on the speed because uh, the other leader in the race dropped out a fraction. Um, done by me was the only one who stayed up on the speed with Quantum Mechanic. So I think you can follow both those two. Um, I thought that was a good effort by Quantum Mechanic who hasn't really been, uh, I guess, put up to this type of level before. He did run in a good Phillies Classic race back at Mooney Valley. Uh, in the spring and finished six on that occasion. And then it went to, to Benigo and, and won its maiden and was spelled after that. Uh, but so this horse has come back quite nice. I think it's getting better the further out in trip it goes. I think this mile distance is a good, um, is the right distance range for Quantum Mechanic and could find a good enough race. And I think it'd be one, um, hard to beat there. And done by me was quite good um, good as well, sticking on, on the speed. So definitely want to follow uh, the, the first horse. Definitely the one you want to follow out of that. But I think Quantum Mechanic and done by me can be winning a race pretty soon as well. Curry Rupp, quite disappointing, to be honest, as the favourite. Uh, drifted late in the betting, but um, still jumped as the favourite. And, yeah, well, put in a bit of a disappointing form. Just didn't really come on from the back. And wasn't um, a whole lot of excuses, really, because Gamekeeper did come from the back as well. So uh, it wasn't like they weren't making any ground from the back. It just uh, didn't turn up and show in the performance. So a bit of a disappointing run by it. I'm not sure what Kieran Martin Dave used to do with it now because the horse that's always shown a bit of promise and ability. And that third first up at... Uh, that third, sorry, at Flemington was a great performance and probably had every right to jump as a favourite, but I think I mentioned in my preview that I just wasn't sure about uh, the gate and where it was going to land the run. And it just is a horse that just seems to do a bit wrong and it seemed to do that uh, once again on Saturday. So um, not sure what to do with that horse now, but um, move on to race number seven and uh, it was a decent enough race. It's the uh, Celebration of Kangaroo Island Handicap and Miss Mandito put in a big run down the outside um, for Gordon Richards, uh, obviously being the new trainer, used to uh, be formerly owned by Paul Krushka. Uh, it was a really nice uh, performance there, and I was quite impressed with, with the win. Um, stepping back to 1,200 metres, a horse that's generally been around that 1,400, seemed to relish getting back to that sprint trip, really showed a nice turn of foot to win there. Uh, Magda Bella was the real eye catch for me. This horse, I did give her a good chance in my preview uh, leading into the race because I thought that she was uh, really knocking on the door to a win, and she's getting closer now. She's gone from the 1,000 up to the... Sorry, 1,050 up to the 1,200. She ran real well for a third there. Um, in the 1,050 race that she ran in first up, she finished by, uh, third behind Mum's My Hero. And little Contra and Mum's My Hero came out and ran third in um, a race that I'm about to discuss very shortly. We did see her go up to Flemington and run for, uh, fourth in a 1,400-meter race behind Rich Itch and Romanta. So I'll be interested. I think that'll be the next target for um, for Mr. Clark and, and uh I think he'll take uh, her out to the 1,400 metres, and she, I reckon she'll eat that up, and she'll be winning. So definitely she's the one I want to be following out of that race. Uh, Turbium, 
interesting type of run there. Um, just boxed on okay. Uh, he just can't find his best form, unfortunately, um, from what we saw of him uh, in the autumn two, uh, two seasons back. So um, I'm not too sure what to do, see about that there. Deck Collector is the one I was on that race. Uh, quite disappointing, really. Um, just didn't really show a lot. Didn't have a lot of luck either. I, I will uh, make mention of that, but... Uh, definitely has been really costly horse for the punters and was once again on the weekend, so it'll be f- make it hard to back from here on out. But look, yeah, the, the leader, the winner was fantastic. We're around the 26 bucks, but Magna Bell is really the one I want to be following uh, coming out of that race. I thought that was a superb run in for third, and she'll be much better for the 1400. Now, moving on to the main race of the day, uh, race number eight, the Group One Tab of South Australian Derby and Russian Camelot. Wow, what a performance! Um, obviously, I had as my on top selection. And didn't disappoint either. It was a very good win. And, uh, I mean, you, you got to... I'll talk a bit more about him later because one of you guys did ask me a question about this horse. So I won't go too into detail about him um, and perhaps his future plans. But um, as for his run on the weekend, it was just terrific. He is really relishing these, these little freshen-ups where he gets only about four or five weeks off and then he comes in and he just... that. But that was just so good. Um, stepping out of the 2,500 metres first up... And to win the way he did so arrogantly uh, was really impressive. So I'll be so interested to see what where Dan O'Brien takes from here. And I will answer that question later on in the video. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned for that at the end of the video to see what um, what my sort of thoughts are on him going into the future. But um, that was a terrific win and definitely is a horse you've got to follow. And I think just about everyone will be following him after that one. That Not many... Uh, Northern Hemisphere three rods come down, win our type of derby. So that was very impressive. No knock on Dallas, and he, he was good. He, um, I guess, was just beaten by a better horse on the day. He was, he was a good wit, uh, run. Warning was quite uh, honest as well. But Zaydani, she's the one that I'll be following. That she was impressive coming up to this distance race first up. I did give her a bit of a chance coming um, into the race, but. Uh, look, she seemed really relish, and she was the, the only one that was sort of towards the speed that really did keep on. So you've got to take a bit of note out of that. Uh, St. Eustace was one I gave a chance at a bit of each way odds. It was a little bit disappointing, just didn't really come into the race from the back of the field. I think maybe that, that run in the St. Ledger just took a little bit out of it. So could uh, forgive that there. But all honours with the winner, Trash and Camelot, he's obviously the definite one you want to follow. I think if he beats all this field any time he runs against him now. So... Definitely the one to follow, but look, Dallas and Warning were quite good, and Zaydani was quite impressive with her first step up to that type of trip. Moonlight Mays makes a good ground weight as well. Moving on to race number nine, final race of the card was won by Be My Star. I got the perfect run of the race, but for me, uh, this was a 1,100-meter benchmark 80 race, and uh, but Mum's My Hero was the real eye-catcher in that race, and like I said, the form lines around Mum's My Hero, as I mentioned prior to this race, with um, her obviously beating... Uh, sorry, with, with him obviously beating uh, the likes of, oh, well, he, yeah, sorry. He, so he, he beat um, one of the horses that we mentioned earlier in the program, which was, uh, that's right, Magna Bella. So the form line's been good around uh, him, and then he obviously came out over the 1,050 metres, won nicely, beat Symphonette and Bayou. Bayou ran really well in this race as well, but uh, was a real eye catch late and making good late ground. Definitely one to follow. I mean, Surprised me around the eight dollars. Really look at the form, and you, you think, yeah, it was you know probably a bit, bit overs. But uh, Bayou was good, making some good late ground. I thought that it might uh, be uh, ready to go in that race. There, uh, seemingly discreet. My my pick went pretty well as well. Really came to line all right. Um, obviously couldn't go with the likes of Lacani Rose and Mum's my hero, but it was still a decent enough run there. So still one you could potentially follow. But look, not the strongest race that I think. I don't think there's going to be anything we have to necessarily massively asterisk the leader was good uh, sorry the winner was good but like i said um got that perfect run of the race so carney rose uh, made some good ground on the outside as well so interesting morphville card um but like i said um russian camel is obviously the, the the definite one you want to be taking out of that and there's a few out of there that i think will go around at bigger odds next time around and perhaps weaker grades so we can keep an eye out for those ones but moving on now to the caulfield program and uh, looking at the first race of the card, it was a two-year-old handicap, 1,200-meter race, and um, was won well by Aidensfield at the first up for Hayes and Dabinick team, and uh, was a good performance. Uh, was was sort of pretty solid in the marker for a horse that was on debut against some really fancied opposition. But uh, look, it had the perfect run of the race. Not saying that that takes any credit off the performance, because to win first up against some that were already, uh, I guess, very well race fit and whatnot, but. Uh, look, was, the way I put him away was quite smart, so he definitely won the fight. I think out of isolation was very good on Debu. Uh, endured a bit of a tough run up on the speed. 
sat, you know, three wide the trip. So definitely one you could follow. Number uh, six isolate out of isolation. I could see a lot of improvement coming out of uh, out of that horse there. Um, and then moving on into National Choice. Now, this was probably one of the runs of the program. He was the favourite. He was so far back, and he just made some fantastic ground coming through uh, the pack. And I, I was really impressed with the way he went through the line there and definitely one you want to be following, uh, the, the, the favourite number one, National Choice. I was very impressed with his effort because he didn't really have a whole lot of chance uh, at the top of the straight. He was looked completely gone. It didn't even look like he'd get close to the placings, but he ran home well and got through the line nicely. So... Definitely one you want to be following, but um, yeah, look, I think you can follow the top three. Um, the rest of them were just okay. I was on show some decorum. I was a little bit disappointed with the run, considering I guess that uh, some of the other leaders stayed up there. River Twine, uh, River Twine was the other one that was on the speed, finished in seventh. Um, but look, I think the top three are definitely the ones you want to be following out of that race there. Uh, moving on to race number two now, and it was the um, it was the benchmark seventy eight Bill Collins handicap. And it was won by Viral, my on top selection there, and paid a good price as well, just over the seven bucks. And uh, look, again, this all sat three wide, no cover, and still won well. Now, it did look to be uh, throughout the day that you wanted to be slightly off the fence. So it wasn't a good part of the track, but it doesn't take any merit off the, the victory because it's still tough to be that, that wide the trip and still win. And it was challenged on multiple occasions from multiple, uh, both on the outside and the inside. So really, he showed some great uh, courage to continue fighting on and to win there under Craig Williams, so that was a real nice win. He's um, definitely one I'll be following out of that race. Uh, uh, Lighter wasn't too bad on the speed. Strategic Phil was looking to get a gap late and was just shuffled out of it, out of things, so he probably was the hard luck story out of the race, and you could probably t- uh, follow him out. And The fifth horse, So You Swing, was excellent on debut. If there's any horse I want to be definitely following out of this race is So You Swing, oh, I'll be definitely backing him next start because that was a terrific run. He came down the outside and he got through the line really well there. Um, so I'll be we're going to follow him number five uh, sorry number 16 so you swing and finished in fifth in that race but viral was very good on the speed strategic feel probably the hard luck story in the race could have gone quite close to winning I'd say if it had just got that gap but all honors the winner was a terrific performance being three I no cover and still managing to win and obviously for those who followed me in on that tip would have been quite happy as well and it didn't have to wait very long for for the next one to get up. It was Oasis Girl, and this was probably the, one of the performances of the day at Caulfield. She was absolutely phenomenal. She put this this um, opposition to be, um, the sword, really. She just ambled up on, on the turn, and she put them away in a few strides. All the rest of them were off the bit chasing, and then they were just going up and down the one spot while she was powering through the conditions. It was a great return after she finished sixth at Flemington over 1,400-meter race uh, behind uh, Kuramai and B Hunter. So... The form lines there, I did say that race would be quite a good form line race, and I was so happy that O.S. Skill came out one because now it gives that bit of extra push to when we see some of those other horses come out to a race now, especially the likes of B. Hunter. Uh, definitely be keen to see B. Hunter go around soon enough. But look, the, nothing against the rest of them, but you know, she made them look very second rate, a lot of them. Um, she beat them by six lengths in the end, and uh, Lord J.C. was the $61 shot. He was poking through for, for second in the end, and... Look, look, the lifeline um, was a horse that I gave a bit of a chance to. Obviously, I asked girl my top selection, but uh, I'm not sure if uh, its race prep is done now. Um, look, he's been up for a little while now for the Gay and Adrian team, but uh, he just, just couldn't go with them, really, and that was uh, quite disappointing considering he's so race fit. He, I was expecting he could at least stay on a bit, but look, all honours with the leader race, the winner of Aces girl, she was terrific, and she's won the follow. Uh, moving on to race number four now, and it was the uh, Mayor's Benchmark 84, and it was won by Supre with Lloyd Kennewell. Uh, this is a horse that's gone through a couple of stable changes uh, in her time, but this was her race. She uh, won Wells third up here, and she um, really relished the 1,600-metre conditions. She came from a long way back, got the, the split late, really got through in Savage Line. It was a good win. Uh, Arctic Shock was the one for me that I want to be following. She was well, she was pretty well backed in the market. She got into five bucks, and... So fortunately for her, her back, as she sat three wide, no cover, and just but she really stuck on well. She had no right, really. I know we're seeing a little bit of a theme here, so maybe we just have to think about that a little bit. Maybe these three wide, no cover performances aren't as strong as what they usually would be just because of the fact that you want it to be just off that fence a little bit. And we're seeing in these few races that I'm mentioning that there's quite a lot of horses that stay with three wide, no cover, and really stuck on. But uh, she was... Still impressive. I mean, she looked like she was in a bit of trouble on the turn, but she's kept fighting to the line. That's what you like to see. And Cryptic Jewel came in fourth. Now, this was a race where Supre came from the back and obviously won the race. So, you know, they were making ground from the back, but um, 
she sort of weaved her way through the field and and got up um, sort of towards the end of the race. So um, I put a bit of merit into Cryptic Jewel's performance because she was wide and she got out to the real uh, outside part of the track and she did hit the line nicely. She was getting through her work late. So I'd be interested to see if they do step her up and trip her if they keep her at that 600 metre mark here in Brent Stanley or whether they'll... Uh, I, I guess find another race in a similar sort of position. But she was good through the line as well, so she's one to follow. So first, third, and probably fourth. Again, no knock on pure Scott. Just doesn't win out of turn. That's my problem with uh, following that horse going forward from here. And I did mention that in my preview as well. Uh, moving on to race number five on the Caulfield program, and it was the three-year-old Phillies Darren Gauchy handicap. It was fantastic that he had a race named in his honour. Obviously a fantastic jockey. And it was won brilliantly by Barbie's Fox, who... We really did get through the conditions nicely. Stormed down the outside, and she was a very nice winner. And um, look, she, she obviously is one to follow from here because she's only had the seven starts for two wins and two places. But more importantly, she's won one in here at the track, and she loves running at this twelve hundred meter mark. She was tried out around that fourteen to six and hundred meter distance, and then she was dropped back to twelve hundred off a big spell first up, and. That seems to be her go. So I'm interested to see if they do step her out in trip or if they keep her at the 1,200. I would probably keep her at the 1,200 metres, but then again, I'm not a trainer, so I can't have too much of an expert opinion there. But it was a very nice win. Button Express was good as well. Um, really loomed up on the turn, looked to be the winner until Barbie's Fox uh, mowed her down. Uh, but she was still quite impressive. And I, I think that was a good enough performance to offer freshen up. And she's a very good horse to back because she hasn't missed the top four placing in uh, her last eight starts so she's always around the mark she's quite consistent she's definitely one that you want to be uh, taking as a punter's horse now she shall fly was really impressive um it was the first of the of the candidate family um racing colors that was a real good performance of the day for the tony and calvin mcavoy um she's had a few issues um she had a lot um, and she came out first up here off a 32 week break and was very eye-catching. She came from a long way back and finished. Uh, went through the line nicely. She's definitely one you want to follow because she is a horse that um, has always showed a bit of ability in a two-year-old campaign, but has obviously had a couple of issues as the stable has uh, mentioned prior to this. And but she was very good first up. She's one you want to follow. Be following because she ran at twenty dollars, so big starting price. But she ran well there. Uh, Paul's regret made some good late ground as well. He was. Uh, sorry, she was quite impressive through the line as well. So you can probably follow this. I think it's not going to be too bad of a four uh, race to be following. And Felicia, I'll, I'll give her, her a bit of a of an excuse because it was her first chat crack on the heavy track. And of the leaders, she was the one who, besides Button Express, did stick on well. So you could probably follow her out. So I'll be happy to follow any of the, the top five in the race. I thought they were all quite impressive in the run. So... Uh, and like I said, look, you can obviously have a lot of hard luck stories, a lot of horses in this that just don't handle the heavy conditions. So it always makes it interesting following the races, uh, well, having a look at the races following he uh, heavy tracks uh, and wet tracks because horses obviously improve stepping back on top of the firm ground. But moving on to race number six was the Burt Bryant handicap and it was won by Sosie Bond. Boy, has he turned a corner. He's, I mean, we know he's always had the ability. He's always had that lot of issues when he was with Robbie Lang of it. Uh, the Hayes Damick team, even when he came to them, he had a lot few issues as well. But he's turned a corner um, absolutely magnificently. He's, he's won two in a row now, which is something he hasn't done for quite a long time. Um, he obviously won the Vobis Gold Mile at Caulfield, being Street Chic and Iconoclasm. He's come out again, won again, so he's in great form. And I wouldn't be surprised if they really uh, probably step him back up to that group quality class now because the way that he put this field away, which is a good field, by the way, you know, there's no slouches in this type of field. And, the way he put them away was very impressive. So I think we could be following Sosa Bond. Leah Pari was absolutely superb first up. It was a great run for Lisa Enright, obviously local uh, Mornington trainer. She's an absolute ripper, and it was fantastic that this horse ran so well for her. Off a 45-week break as well, mind you. Um, he's been having a few issues as well, but that was a terrific uh, run by him. Uh, so I was quite impressed with the with the way that he came into the race and being a first up performance and being for a small stable he might still go around a big uh, price next start being that he was thirty one dollars and uh, it's interesting because with him that he doesn't have necessarily the greatest first up form is that eight first up runs for a win and a placing and his second up form isn't great but third up's when he really fires so perhaps keep that in mind he was a good win uh, effort. Maybe just watch him go around one more time. Hopefully he doesn't come out and win at $61 odds. I mean, hopefully for the connections and the stable he does, but hopefully for us, for our sake, he doesn't do that. But I'll be watching him for third up because I think he's got a win in him. And uh, obviously this was quite a good field as well. So he could find himself a good race to pick off a nice win. He loves running at Caulfield. Um, 
Any other horse sort of follow it. Mahama Day was quite good through the line. Hangman uh, stuck on pretty strongly, but um, look, Southern Rock was just a little bit disappointing. I was hoping for a bit more out of it. Uh, and So You Win, which was my top selection, was quite disappointing finishing in ninth. Just never came on from the back of the field. Didn't seem to get through the conditions, which for me was a little bit of a surprise. Obviously, um, second up, I really liked its uh, form second up, and it's been around some good races before, but never had the heavy track form. I had the soft track form, which is why I had a bit of confidence going in, but obviously we had more rain before the race on Saturday, which uh, really knocked him out of contention because he's not a heavy tracker in the slightest, as we saw. So, Sosie Bond's one you want to follow. Some of the rest of them, uh, look, can probably find a race, but Sosie Bond, he was the impressive one out of it. And then, moving on, we again saw another one in, in the race number seven, the benchmark 84, Ned's Handicap. Shot of Irish was just terrific for Richie Lamming. Obviously, the former Scott Brunton horse uh, was... Really good and seemed to be hitting a bit of form now. I did mention coming into the race, I, I was against him. Didn't even put him in my top four, which makes me look a bit silly now. But the reason why is just because that first up run at Sandown, obviously, was a real leader's uh, you know, track. Whereas this time around, look, they were kind of winning all over the place. So you can't really say too much about it. And he got through the heavy conditions. And I did think that that might be the case, that he would get through the wet conditions just fine. He's now had seven starts on a heavy track for five wins. So... He loves getting through the wet, and every time he sees a wet track, he can definitely take with a bit of confidence. So I did miss that one, but uh, really good performance and a good win. Aussie Nugget was the real impressive performance for me, though. It's definitely the one I want to follow. And the reason I say that is because it came from the towards the back of the field, and it's a horse that I was against as well because of the fact that he just isn't a wet tracker, but he ticked that off with on a heavy track. He was a terrific performance from back in the field. I was very impressed with his run. No boo turned its form around like I suggested it might have. I did put it in my top four and uh, thought that it would turn around, uh, its form around going on top of, uh, into the sorry going through the wet conditions, and that was exactly the right uh, scenario. So hopefully any of you might have followed that in there and. Got it at the each way price. I didn't have it as my, my top three selections. I believe I had it as my top four, but did think it could run a good enough race being back on the heavy conditions. But um, yeah, and um, and no boo's definitely a horse that's going to be getting better over further. So I'll be um, looking out for him going forward. Um, and think where Jew was probably the run of the race because this horse was um was wide throughout the trip. There's three wide, no cover, but still and and looked yeah you know, came off the bit on the turn looked like it was completely gone but still fought back to run well enough there and it was a horse that was always going to struggle because of the wide barrier and I did mention that in my preview but um I was quite impressed with the way it finished off and it's a horse now that has uh, not missed a top four placing in its last six starts so um is really proving to be uh, a, a nice horse he could follow each way and um I, I'm sure he might return to the winner's uh, stalls very soon if he could run up to that type of performance again Grinzig Star was my top selection disappointing I don't know whether it didn't get through the conditions or whatnot. I'm not too sure. Um, obviously, he isn't a proven wet tracker. He's had two starts on heavy now for no wins and no placings. So maybe just you, know, you can forgive him by going through those conditions. But he just hasn't been able to fire up that level again. And um, unfortunately, I'm probably against him now. And I just can't seem to back him anymore. And Marat, she was quite disappointed as well. She didn't get through the conditions and run well either. So two good horses there that uh, in the past that just haven't really shown up uh, in recent recent runs so hopefully they can turn their form around for their conditions and followers moving on to race number eight and it was the uh, lamara's hotel south melbourne handicap and um was won nice by news girl and she's a horse that just seems to love this track doesn't she i mean she just turns up and seems a wit uh pick off some of these races she often goes around at a decent price as well she's had 12 starts at the track for three wins and three seconds now so she does pop up here and there and uh, she's now ticked off that heavy track performance, so she uh, was nice. But she was a good uh, performance. Now, Tavis Sam was my top selection. I'm going to stick with him. Um, I made him as my best bet at the nine dollars, and uh, fortunately, like all good uh, each way bets, he comes fourth by a nose, um, a photo finish on the line. But um, a little bit interesting because um, straightened up was a couple of lengths in the lead. Jamie Carr stuck to the fence, which you know I think if she had her time again, she might have angled out to. The middle of the track she took a bit of a gamble going onto the fence there hoping that the ground might still be good there but definitely was not and um, he folded up a little bit late and but I'll, I'll still be following him out of that just for the, that simple fact that he went down onto the inside rail and uh, obviously was the inferior ground and in the end not saying it would have cost him the race because I still think that you know the other two would have overcome him but definitely cost him a place I think at, at the very least so I'll be following him out of that Esperance made good ground late Coruscate was quite good 
Um, never again was making good late ground as well, so it might be one that you want to have a look at um, being six. Crystal Dreamer was disappointing. I, I think he's um, unfortunately just about done for uh, in terms of this. Uh, might have to look at retirement for him now because he just hasn't really shown up now. In saying that, it's only two bad performances. Prior to that, he had uh, two nice thirds, one in a in a Group 1 Oakley plate and uh, behind Pippi and one in the Christmas Stakes behind all to a Royal Mystico. So, Look, he can come back to form. That they obviously this is what they have done with him a bit. The Simon, uh, the Mark Matthew Elton, Simon Zara team. They've just sort of freshened him up, freshened up, freshened him up. You, you have a look, and that's what he does. He runs off a freshen up each time. So we just see if that maybe make a bit of a change to that type of um, that that setup. But interesting with him because, like I said, he was quite disappointing, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, for and he's becoming one to hard one that's hard to follow because he hasn't won in quite some time now. Uh, moving on to the final race of the card, and High Stranger was definitely one you want to be following. This was a great win, first up over the 1,000 metres there, Miller Handicap. Um, really, obviously, got up on the inside and angled out to the middle of the track, so got the perfect run of the race. But this is a horse that has got form around the 16 of the 1,800-metre mark. So, I mean, you know, and even the 14, this never really had a crack at the 1,000 metres. So to win like that it did, first up over 1,000 metres, against a few horses that are sharper and a bit more... Got a bit of race fitness on their side. is really impressive. So High Strangers one you want to be following out of that. The Astrologist, though, was probably the, the black book of the day. And I, I think a lot of people would have black booked it after the run on the weekend. That was a terrific performance. First up off a 42-week break. And uh, very similar to the stable night, She Shall Fly. Uh, he was very good uh, closing off late. He had the, the third fast sections of the race, uh, of the whole meeting, uh, for the last couple of hundred metres. Uh, obviously, the only two that it was behind was Viral and um, in that viral race, there was a couple in there that ran uh, faster 200 metres home. But I, the Astrologist was so far back behind them, looked absolutely no chance. Be tearing a ticket up if you were on it each way. But uh, yeah, he, he found the line not uh, very nicely. So definitely one you want to be following because that was a terrific first up performance. But And uh, looks Beauty Supreme was quite good, absolute flirt. It was good enough on speed as well. But look, the, the third horse and the first horse of the two, I want to be really following the most out of the Caulfield race there. So, uh, yeah, that's the Caulfield meeting done and dusted. Now we'll move on into the Rose Hill meeting. Uh, sorry, the sorry, the Ramwick meeting. What I might do is um, I'm going to actually move the Ramwick meeting onto the Part 2 video. So if you want to be watching the Ramwick video, uh, stay tuned for Part 2 of this video because um, I can see now it's just about to time out um, where it splits it in half anyway. So um, if you have done finishing watching this video, please go out and check out Part 2 where I'll be looking at the Ramwick meeting and the runners to follow.